Welcome to my channel Tech Tutorials 2K2 Bug. So today I'm going to explain you the concept of class in C++ programming language. So I'll start with the definition of a class and I'll show you how to create a class in C++ programming with an example. So I'll start with the definition of a class. So your class is having a multiple definition. So the simple definition of a class we can say it's simply a collection of objects. So we can say class is nothing but a collection of objects. So what do you mean by an object? So objects are nothing but it's a real time entities. Which is having state and behavior. So this is one of the definition for class. So you can consider a real time example. So you can consider your classroom. So your classroom will consisting a number of objects. So just assuming that once you are in classroom. So now your classroom is having students, faculty, chairs, tables, blackboard, chalk piece, fans, walls. So you can see uh, different objects. So the collection of all these objects uh, we consider as a class. So we can consider the another uh, definition of a class is it's a collection of data members and member functions. So this is another definition of a class. So what do you mean by a data member and what do you mean by a member functions? Because we can say like class is nothing but it's a collection of data members and member functions. So we have to know what do you mean by data member and member functions. So simply data members are nothing but the variables or the attributes defined or declared inside of a class. So now coming to your member functions is nothing but the methods or functions declare or define inside of a class and used to manipulate your member form. Data members, right? Simply we can say class is nothing but it's a collection of data members and member functions and data members are nothing but a variables or attributes we can define or declare inside of a class definition. Whereas the member functions is nothing but the methods of functions we can define inside of a class and those methods are used to manipulate the data members of the defined class. So we'll take a, a syntax because we know like uh, C++ strictly follows the syntax. So I'll give you a syntax. So how to define a class in C++? So simply we have to use a keyword class. And within this means you have to specify your class name. So this class name will be a user defined. So user can give anything as class name and it must be meaningful. And then your class definition is enclosed within this open and close brace. And remember always, class definition must end with the semicolon. So within of this uh, inclusion of brackets, so you have three things. So the first thing is an access specifiers. So must followed with a colon. And then we have to specify your data members. and member functions. 
So there is no limit on data members and member functions because we can define any number of data members and member functions in your class. So this is a syntax for creating a class in C++. So now, what do you mean by access specifiers? So in C++, we have three types of access specifiers, name, private, public, and protected. So these are three different types of access specifiers supported by C++, which will specify the scope of your data members and member functions. So here I'll give you a, a small description about this. Uh, the private access specifiers, when you give your data members and member functions, and those cannot access outside of this class. Whereas public, we can access. Whereas protected, so we can use this access specifier when you are using the concept of inheritance. Otherwise, it acts like a private access specifier. Remember, in C++, by default access specifier, the compiler will take as private. So now I'll give you a small example for a class. So now you consider an example. Suppose, if I consider my class is a library. So library is my class. So now I can uh, specify some data members and member functions that related to a library. So here, before I'm going to give an example, so I'll give you an illustration of a library class. So now you can take a class as a library. So what Attributes will give you a more description on this library. So now you can consider uh, your class library will consisting of uh, different types of books. So obviously we can see the main objects we consider with uh, library is books. So I'll start with uh, about, uh, I'll give some description about the books. So for my class library, so I need to follow this prototype for defining a class. So for that, here I can use a keyword class and my class name is library. So in object oriented environment, it is better to use always you can start your class name with a capital letter. So then I can enclose within these two braces in between that I have to specify my data members and member functions. So I already said we have to give an access specifiers to our data members member functions. Otherwise it will take by default as private. So you can make your data members as private, but make sure that your member function, it should be public. Otherwise, we cannot access outside of the class. So here, I'm consider my data members for the library class is name of the book, which is of type string. So I can take book name, So I'll consider the length of the string is 25 characters. And uh, in, in my uh, sense, the book name is nothing but the title of the book. And then I can consider author. So author of the book, again, it will be of a string. And I can consider another thing as price. So for describing about a book, so I, I'll consider the main attributes which describes about the book. So in my library class, these are my three data members, book name, author and price. And I didn't mention any access specifier here so that my compiler by default it will take as a private. So I already mentioned you make sure that your functions, it must be public. So we can use an access specifier like this. And here I need to specify my member functions. So here I'm using my member functions void get underscore details. So is one method. And another method is Void show details. So these are the two methods 
I'm including my class and then I close my class definition with semicolon. So this is an example for a class. So now I'll show you how you're going to describe, I mean, how you're going to represent a class. So now we'll see the representation of a class. So means once you create a class, it will uh, take a blueprint for the class. So no objects are created, no space is allocated for your class because it is a blueprint. Right, so I'll give you a representation of a class. So once you define a class, how you are going to represent that particular class? So representation. So your class is going to represent like this. So it consisting of three parts. Okay, suppose you consider the same example what we uh, written just now. So I have my class name. So the first part will consist in the class name. And second part will consist in the data members. And the third section will consist in member functions. So what is my class name here? So my class name is library. So this is my class name library and I have three attributes. So I, I have three data members that is book name, author and price. So now I have three data members here, book name, which is of type string and I have an author name, which is of type string again and I have a price which is of type float. So now I have three data members, member functions and two member functions I have in my class. So in this part, I need to specify my member functions. So those will you of get details, get underscore details. And second one is show details. So this is about a class. I hope you all can understand. Thank you.